Uh, hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Anne Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation. And we will have time to address these questions once the presentation is complete. So today's speaker is Amani Lusekelo. Uh, Amani is a senior lecturer at the Dar es Salaam University College of Education. And his research interests include morphosyntax of argument structure in Bantu languages, the linguistic landscape in Africa, and anthropological linguistics of non-Bantu languages in Tanzania. So please join me in welcoming Amani as he gives his talk, Linguistics Aspects of Names of Crops and Vegetation in Hatsabe. Thank you. Um, uh, Amani Lusekelo and, and my friend Mick Mugeja obtained a small fund on documenting medicinal plants uh, amongst the Hadzabe. And he's in, in literature and he's interested in the narrations uh, of the medicines and I'm interested in the linguistic aspects of the names. So it's, it's, it's like he's a combined uh, presentation. I'm not sure whether he's in or not uh, at the moment, but He's aware that I will be talking today, and I'm happier. I'm healthier, and uh, mm, this disease. Um, okay, up to this moment, I'm fine, and I'm using Kuriam Doe's uh, laptop, and I'm not sure whether he's fine or not, but I can see he's fine. He's behind me uh, in his home. Mm. The goal of the talk. Uh, uh, is uh, I'm trying to continue a conversation of the previous talks about the Hadzabe community of Tanzania. And as you are aware, it was Jeremy who began a conversation uh, uh, in our Rift um, Valley Network webinar series. And from his talk, which I also revisited today, he had two points which I think they are necessary for my talk today. Uh, on the one hand, uh, he mentions of the presence of contact between Hadzab and the Bantu speaking communities, Ihanzu, Sukuma, and the other Bantu speaking communities, and Nilotic, Datoga, and Kushatik, Iraq. And to me, the the uh, outcome of the contact is central, um, is a central subject that needs to be continued in the conversation about the Hadzabe community of Tanzania. And two, he mentions of the tourist Hadzabe who ha appear to have uh, to introduce clicks even to words which um, initially did not have clicks. And he's, he used an example from Tana. Um, which is central to my concern about the language. And in my presentation, I talked about my confusion on the data about personal names amongst the Adzabe in the sense that they have a number of nouns which are foreign. And when I was doing the recording, Andrew Harvey said, no, no, you are saying they are not Hadzabe, but they are used by the Hadzabe. So they are Hadzabe by origin. No, no, they are Hadzabe by use. Maybe we should trace the origin. And partly I'm having that view that we needed to establish um, the names amongst the Hadzabe. And uh, uh, Andrew and Richard again talked about the literature of the Hadzabe in the 100 years or so. And they mentioned about contact in Western Hadzabe, in Dunuhina or Dunuhia, and the absence of research there is uh, when compared to the Eastern Hadzabe, research in the Western uh, part of Lake Eas is a little bit um, lagging behind. So um, to me, I, I found it um, interesting to go and see um, what is happening in Western Hadzabe. And my second slide, I'm talking about the research and contact. It begins with James Woodburn, who Andrew Harvey and Richard Griscom had mentioned that is the 
it's, it's, it's more a, a recent and scientific research, anthropological research on the Hadzabe. And I'm happy that Richard introduced me to the um, Rift Valley um, um, Dropbox, to which I enjoyed reading a number of publications, a number of research output by Woodburn. And from most of his publications, he's mentioning of the presence of a hundred Hadzabe, also called Bahi in the western parts of Lake Ayas. And it seems that was in the 1950s, that number is central in the sense that there are, is a community of the Hadzabe in the western parts of Tanzania. And they had been in contact with the Skuma for some time. And in some of the literature I have looked at, they are mentioning, at the, for example, the Sukuma have songs which mention about the Hadzabe, and they use the, the, the label Tindiga, but Tindiga. And they, these songs are about the caravan tra uh, tra salt trade, in which salt was obtained from Lake Ayas. And if the Sukuma have the names of the Hadzab in their songs, it means they had been in contact for some time. And we need to see what is the outcome of the contact. And um, Woodburn in, in the 1970s publications on the material culture of the Hadza, he technically says he had not visited the Western part. And uh, in most of the works I'm um, aware of, he's keeping that statement. His research in the western parts of the Hadzabe is a little bit less there, yeah. And he also mentions about the presence of uh, uh, farming Hadzabe, small scale farming Hadzabe people around Monguli in Mkarama district now, which used to be Ramba. And to me, uh, uh, those are more interesting as regards to language contact. Mm, again, Frank Mallow and uh, Nick Blatton Jones mm, mm, appear to have visited the Western Hadzabe. They are mentioning of the presence of about 200. Sometimes they have written as 250. In the other literature, they are talking of 300 Hadzabe people in the Western part, in the mm, Western part of Lake uh, uh, Ayas. And they are indeed sedentary. Uh, uh, of farming Hadzabe people in West Africa. And I'm happy in one of the literatures, Frank Maru is mentioning of uh, engaging some 20 households of the Hadzabe in West, uh, Western Lake uh, areas. And he had met typically 63 members of this community. And they also mention of the presence of the Hadzabe people in Mangola. And uh, yes, it is Nick, Nick Blatton Jones who's mentioning of the high priced safaris, engagement of the Hadzab in the high priced safaris uh, in Imeatu. Now, mm, uh, in this presentation, uh, I want to, to suggest that both the tourist Hadzab and the sedentary Hadzab maintain a continued and a close tie to the full time foragers. Mm, and mm, at the point now, it has come to my knowledge that sedentary and tourist Hadzabe tend to participate in research expeditions which are carried out by various researchers amongst the Hadzabe community. So, so when we talk of full-time foragers, mm, we have to think twice about the mm, categorization of the Hadzabe as full-time foragers, because now we have as well sedentary and tourist Hadzabe who are engaged in research expeditions and they discussed into the traditional attire and they will um, um, appear as full-time foragers. Um, since I'm concerned with plant names and crop names, I had to look at the work of Mm, uh, that one I cannot add in Edin Mir, Edin Mir, and his research um, amongst the uh, ah, yes, I will use Nicholas. So uh, Nicholas did conduct research amongst the uh, amongst the Hadza, and he's mentioning the presence of Datoga, Isanzu, Sukuma, and the other foreign words within the lexicon of Hadza. 
And of course, he collected a good number of nouns. He's mentioning uh, like 1,400 nouns, which he gathered and he tried to characterize them uh, into the indigenous and the foreign uh, uh, nouns. And it is fascinating for me to know that there is penetration of foreign words, in, foreen nouns into uh, uh, Hadzaben. And this is supported by um, Kirk, Kirk Miller uh, in his research. And now I'm, I'll focus on his paper ab about the integration of kingship terms, uh, foreign kingship terms uh, from Alagua, Ihanzu, and Isukuma. And when I read through the paper, I realized that there are some kinds of substitutive borrowing um, in which foreign, it appears that some foreign uh, uh, um, kingship terms tended to push away indigenous ones. And there are, we have substitutive borrowing in which some gaps within this uh, uh, um, um, kingship uh, system of the Hadzabe had been uh, introduced um, as they are used from um, um, neighboring communities. And uh, in a way, uh, um, it is fascinating to note that uh, almost 30% uh, of the uh, lexicon of Hadza is full of foreign words. And it, um, to me, that is too much. And it's as much as the presence of foreign words in Kiswahili, orient, uh, words of Oriental origin in Kiswahili, um, which uh, would require uh, further investigation is into how these foreign words have brought into Hadza foreign uh, uh, grammatical elements and how they get accommodated into Hadza. Maybe that will be a, another larger project to, uh, hand, uh, to deal with. And um, also, and, uh, as regards with other um, literatures on nouns in Hadzabe, I'm interested in a paper by Roger Blanch um, on, uh, uh, as regards uh, the names of important animals, names of large animals, which uh, appear to have three uh, names. Can you either have a common name, you can have a hunting name, and you can have a name when the animal is a carcass, is dead, and the name for the carcass. And since there are several names for animals, and we are aware that the Hadzabe are foragers, they hunt wild animals, and they also use wild tubers and the fruits. So the assumption is that that is what I'm putting the bottom of the, this slide. The assumption is that if we have a series of uh, uh, animal names, is it possible to have a series of plant names? Because plants are also useful in the community. Uh, again, uh, looking into the morphology of nouns, because we are dealing with uh, names of plants and crops. Mm -hmm. Previous researchers, they are, have provided this array of the gender and the number marking system in the uh, Hadza uh, language. And the feminine is either introduced by the suffix ko, and of course it's plural, will be be'e or pe'e. The masculine singular is unmarked. It's plural will be be'e or pe'e. And um, when I look at the names, um, uh, perhaps names of plants, I realized that um, most of the names will end into some form of finals, are not typically as suffixes, but most of the nouns end in either wa or ya or a or Maybe that one I didn't pronounce it properly, and I can't put it properly. And while we are suggesting that the masculine singular is unmarked, we have to think of how many nouns come into the unmarked singular masculine gender. And can't we establish some pattern and see how the 
masculine is uh, masculine singular is unmarked, or perhaps there are some patterns which indicate a series of some finals, which might suggest that the masculine singular might be also have some mechanisms to show that is masculine. And I'll talk of that as regards to some plant names which bear the feminine suffix ko, and in other instances, they do not bear the masculine suffix ko. And here I can draw an example of a common tree, the Acacia totalis, which is Mgunga in Swahili, even the Mgunga, Mgunga Chuma. It is Mokanga or Mukanga as far as the West, Western Hadza is concerned. So Mukanga, I assume with some speakers it ends with A, or with other speakers it ends with Ko, Mukanga. Now, when it doesn't appear with the prefix, with the suffix, what element is getting to the final position of the noun? And if so, how many of these nouns we have in Hadza which may behave in that way? And is it possible for us to establish a pattern, somehow a pattern? Perhaps the purpose of the talk, I have mentioned some of the purpose and my sense, I'll repeat them quickly first. Mm, if the Hadzba had been there around Lake Ayers for all that time, mm, mm, it is obvious that they have mm, reference uh, uh, place uh, names of physical landmarks in West Africa, as is shown in the Hadza culture book, cultural book, mm, which was produced in sometime in 2007. Mm, if that is the case, that they have landmarks. And we are aware that in the second purpose, we have names of animals which are plentiful. And in other cases, they occur in a series. And if that is happening uh, now, uh, can we establish the same pattern for tubers and berries and plants and crops, maybe? Uh, since the Hadza had been in that environment for such long and plants is part of the uh, 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 subsistence kind of life and is shelter. And if they adopt small scale farming and they are, uh, bring in names from adjacent communities, how are these names uh, obtaining the gender and the number marking? And can we say something about the unmarked masculine gender? In this regard, and some of these questions uh, had formulated, had helped us to formulate a small uh, 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 research project within the auspices of the University of Dar es Salaam Competitive Research Fund for this year 2020. And yeah, I think now I can begin presenting data, and but we cannot present our data without looking into the um, names of plants as they exist in the literature. And it is Frank Mallow and um, Daoud Peterson who have provided us with a good list of names. In the second slide, they have these names from Frank Mallow. This is table 5.1 in his book. And from um, this data, we want to develop three ideas from this data, particularly on the stages, the stages of the final elements in each of mm. We assume together with mm, uh, sense and uh, Nicholas Edinmir that the properties of the nouns are more of mm, suffix in nature and these suffixes inform us well about the gender number marking and this is the how Frank Marrow has presented them and his orthographic representation is central in in this regard to our talk 
And uh, the three uh, issues which we developed from that table is that one, does the linguistic morphology, uh, morphology or suffix of each name reveal some patterns of the Hadzabe nouns? Can we obtain some patterns from these names? Two, mm, do these names have some implications to the names of crops? We assume the Hadzabe not been farmers, so they adopted farming in the recent years. And if so, then how are these names accommodated in the language? And three, which is sent very central in our talk, the, the noun Kongolo and the noun Muguila are available in Kisukuma. And I think they are also available in other band languages like in Nyamwezi. And they checked, is it Muguila? Maybe Muguila is also available in Hanzu. And if that is the case, now an important question arises as to why should the Hadza, who are using plants throughout their life, how would they borrow from Sukuma? Our assumption here is that the Hadza must have names of these plants which they have used since then, since time immemorial. Time, whatever time they had been in around Lake Victoria, uh, Lake Ayers. Now, how could they take names from Kisukuma or uh, uh, Nisanzu or any other uh, language in the neighborhood? Can we have an array now of two names, one being indigenous and the other one being borrowed? Can we have, for, say, for Congolo, can we have an indigenous name from which is a typical Hadza? And we assume maybe at a point or so, the Sukuma speaking people had come close to the Hadza and pressurized them and they op uh, opted to adopt Congolo. Or we can't uh, uh, obtain such an array of names, so indigenous name and foreign name for a single plant species. Oh, okay. Uh, some of the assumptions we already have is that the masculine or neuter in singular is not specified, it's not marked, but we have the core, B, and B differentiations of the feminine, masculine, and masculine, no, feminine, is, I'm sorry, this must be feminine plural, B or P is a feminine plural, and B and P is a masculine plural. But a number of nouns, some nouns end in A or wa or ya. And I assume, based on Bonsans and Nicholas Edinmir, that these would be masculine. But can't we establish a pattern of the masculine? That is what I'm, I'm trying to suggest. And uh, we are aware that the the plural, the matrix of the plural marking is not such straightforward. It's not singular in the plural per se, as Bon Sands had articulated. Um, since now I'm having some um, less time to my 30 minutes uh, uh, plan, I want to share a few of our data since this is an ongoing research. And our data comes from Dunduia and I worked with villagers from Sungu. And uh, there are, I could identify 13 typical Hadza families. And there are other mixed Hadza, Hadza Sukuma families. And um, my, my informants are these ones too. Uh, Samson Gango, uh, Salehe, and Catalina Mayai. Um, I would also state clearly that they participated in the research expeditions by Frank Mallow and Nicholas Bloton Jones. And I think Gonga is talking about meeting James Woodburn sometime. 
when he visited the western parts of uh, uh, they speak Sukuma, they speak Swahili, they speak Hadza. Uh, and this is my informant from Eda Chini. I will not dwell much on my uh, um, Mili Mozengu Mandeke from Eda Chini, uh, and that is uh, uh, her daughter. And this is my informant from Munguli. They think, uh, I, I think Andrew Harvey knows her. I uh, saw so his signature in the book from his uh, from her house. And ah, okay, my colleague uh, uh, in the meet, Mikim Geja, uh, had worked with Mariamo Anyawile. And, uh, most of the researchers of the Hadza uh, Hadza community are aware of um, the contribution of Mariamo Anyawile. Um, I'm very grateful for her instructions on the orthography of Hadza and uh, she wrote down the names of uh, plants from uh, Mangola and uh, she used both the orthographic representation and the she she's able to show clicks using the um, uh, IPA signs of clicks. She didn't go into the bush so it was Mikim Geja and the Sapo uh, Isaiah Sapo went to the bush, they came with photographs, and they sat with Mariam to uh, um, provide names. And some of the names I would want to share is Sawa, uh, which is Sayu in Kiskuma, and it is Sawa Changa uh, 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 in that dog and the, the um, Kuriam Do is working on the names in the talk and now can you feel that he's shaking his head behind my, my back. And Mokanga, that is Kashia um, Tatlis, in Sukuma is Mugunga, in the talk, uh, no, I cannot pronounce that, Harbaged, Harbaged, maybe Harbaged. Richard has to come in and help me with that. But with Isayu, there are some similarities with these names. And I will say it's, they all have a single source. But with the Datoga name for the Acacia totalis, I think it's, there are some uh, differentiations which are uh, different uh, uh, sources of the names. And the other one, Mtunduru, is, is Mtunduru in Hadza, Mtunduru uh, in Sukuma, and I think it's the same in Hanzu. And Nyamwezi, and of course the Datoga have the Mtunduruda. Kuri uh, is not saying anything. Mm. The Hadza base, uh, they have Munyala. Uh, uh, Mikim Geja, who is speaking, uh, is a native speaker of Kiskuma, has mentioned Manyala for, uh, and for this tree, and Mnyaranyanda, Mnyaranyanda in, in Datoga. And um, uh, Michael, uh, our concern, sorry, Michael, I would say, yeah, because Mick is interested more in the narrations about the medicinal uh, issues. My concern is about the uh, morphology of these words. And uh, in, in a few of the plants, names of plants I gathered, 42 plants I gathered in Yadachini, um, I realized that the division between the BE and the BE is more or less the same. And we have 24 names which are feminine. The pattern is different in Munguli. Most of the nouns were in the plural is in masculine. And the feminine is a few. I could have obtained fewer entries for the feminine. But uh, the ako or cough uh, announced in the singular are, um, of, of course, many. And, but that does not do, do out the presence of um, nouns ending either in wa or ya or any other nouns uh, apart from be or be or ko. Likewise, in Isungu, the pe or be is, is plentiful as opposed to the, the other one. And uh, 
the um, feminine is also plentiful, but it's more or less like the, the other nouns which do not end in uh, 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 the same element. So um, when combined in totality uh, without um, um, checking the presence of similar nouns for some trees which are alike across the four zones in uh, uh, hard speaking zones. The BE or PE, which is a masculine uh, element, takes in a number of nouns. And the feminine uh, takes a fewer nouns. But when it comes to nouns which take ko, oh, they are many. And those which take wa or ya, they are many. So um, the assumption put forward by, I will not say the assumption, the statement put forward by Nicholas Ettinger and Bonsans that plants are mm, more of feminine. Mm, I'm afraid to say it's not what we obtain in the field. And we wait with different speakers. So uh, Maria Manyawire has his part, uh, her pattern. And, um, um, Why do I forget the name of my informant from Kalama? Uh, okay, her father is Athman, but I, I can't recall her first name. And this is also a, 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 a lady, and, and uh, in this zone, I worked with both two. Now, with at least four speakers, this is the pattern we obtain. And to me, whether you assign the feminine or gender is part of debate because even the speakers themselves do not produce straightforward answers to them. There will be differences uh, even within the same speaker and across speakers. And another issue that we want to say, the formation of plurality it's not straightforward. In some cases, the feminine uh, nouns may be pluralized as masculine, as congoloak, it becomes congolope. And sometimes the, um, a masculine uh, pluralizes as masculine. Or um, uh, mokanga is both. It's either mokanga or mokangako, and it becomes mokanga pe. It's feminine and it, it means feminine. Or shakwa, or shakwako, it becomes shakwa baby, which is masculine. So the pattern is not typically straightforward, and uh, I'm not the first one to observe this. Bonsan had observed that, and uh, Nicholas has also observed that. So um, I think we need to establish a pattern which is clearer. Um, how long did I talk? 30 plus minutes. Uh, I think I should stop. No, but I can't stop without talking about crops. Uh, maybe I should uh, uh, avoid this slide about um, the, the um, claims made by Edin Mill and Bonnie Sands. Uh, of course, I mentioned it. There are variations across, across plants. And the pairing, the be or pe -e or ko or without ko is indeed uh, speaker, it looks to me speaker oriented or informant oriented. And even informants would not agree whether it is be -e or, or pe -e or, or pe -e or, yeah. And um, as a, a person interested in language contact, I try to compare names of these crops. Like um, when I was in Munguli, Mobogo is also Mibogo in Hanzu. Mukue, Mukue, and Mukuhe in Hanzu. Uh, I'm trying to check the one which um, close uh, Sawa, Sawa Chanda. Mtunduru, Mtunduruda the Hadza and Datoga, because I'm also engaged in the research about Datoga. Uh, all the Skuma, Miki Mgeja is very interested with the Skuma, Mokanga Mugunga, Muduguyua in Hadza, Muduguyu in Sukuma. 
ningiwea eh, in hadza ningiwe eh, in sukuma nguma in hadza ngumo ngumo in sukuma mm. kongolo wa in hadza ngongolo in sukuma so mm, it appears that the hadza have borrowed mm, a large number of nouns from Bantu. From the Western part, have borrowed a lot of nouns from Sukuma. And to me, it is strange that the Sukuma should borrow nouns from, or the Hadza should borrow nouns from the Sukuma. Well, they had been in the wilderness, depending on the wild berries and fruit, uh, berries and the tubers and the leaves throughout their life. It appears that that is a little bit strange, and I could not find so many nouns with two names except a few. And um, muduguyu, muduguyuwa, muduguyu pi, which appears to be a loan from Bantu. And we have hogok, hogoko pi, which, as far as Peterson is concerned, it appears that is the same plant species. Balanite, and again, Mobogo, and the other one, Kongoloko, Kongoloako, and uh, Peterson is showing that na Nashanako is also, and Nashanabe uh, is, is another name for the same. And if you have an array of two names, why should they borrow? That is the question which is, is not, uh, not been answered so far. And we also have to determine as, uh, of these two nouns between, say, muduguyuwa and hogoko, which one is highly used in this uh, current speech, at least in Dunduhina. Or if we had substitutive borrowing in which the bantu like nouns are replacing the typical native way, uh, names that, is, that would require further research. And what about crops? I think it shows the same pattern. Kure is still showing me time now and saying I'm using 30 plus 38 minutes. Uh, I should we rush through slides for Yoko? Uh, for um, sorghum, I don't think they have borrowed, but for potatoes, candolo, candolia, or candolo is it's similar to the Bantu uh, mandolo. Maize, haguko, it's not similar to Bantu. Matangako, I'm aware that is similar to uh, Ihanzu, Matanga or Tang. There are also some similarities in crops and some differences. So the flow of foreign num, names of crops is also uh, creating the same pattern as plant names. And uh, 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 crops come from many donor languages, mm, particularly Bantu, similarly to nouns, and Kiswahili also has its impact. And mm, I want to stop mm, because I've talked too much. I think I will need to learn from you as well. So in the conclusion, I'm saying the lexicon of the Hadza appears to be large, having the Toga nouns, having Bantu nouns, having typical Hadzabi nouns. And this is uh, 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 a result of the contact with neighboring communities. But we are aware that each speech community is in contact with a different uh, uh, language. Uh, uh, say the Western the, uh, Hadza are in contact with the Skuma, which is Bantu. Uh, in Mkarama, the, the, uh, they are in contact with um, Ihanzu. Uh, in Mbulu, the Tlika Nebe and the Sponga Nebe are in contact with Iraq and Datoka, and the, all these languages bring in uh, 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 different names. And we can talk, continue to talk about the BE or BE or this masculine and feminine throughout uh, 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 the four conversations in our Rift Valley Network webinars. And I have borrowed a lot of ideas from these references. And I'm grateful for them. And I will mention again, I'm grateful to Richard Grimscombe for 
introduce inviting me to the Hadza uh, uh, Dropbox. Asante Sana. Thank you very much, Amani, for this really interesting presentation. Uh, that means we now have time for questions or comments. Um, so if you want to ask a question or offer a comment, please put them in the chat module. Uh, and to give everyone some time to write, I'm going to start with uh, one question of my own. So I was wondering, uh, I know you said that of the 191 names you collect, you didn't cross compare yet, if you had maybe any um, overlap there. But um, what kind of plants did you select for? Did you look at the usages? So were just edible plants or was it anything you could find? Or did you see any, any change, like differences in uh, the plants, what kind of cultural uses they have? Uh, the, the project we, we obtained fund is about medicinal plants. So our focus had been on medicinal plants, but that does not rule out the, uh, our interest in examining uh, any plant we come across because we had to take a photo. We have to listen to the way they prepare the medicine, but these plants do not grow in isolation. In the neighborhood of one plant, you have uh, another plant which is not medicinal. So we also take a photo and inquire whether it's food, is a source of food, whether it's a source of honey, nectar, which is used to make uh, uh, honey or anything. So um, we are maybe towards the end of the year, we will be able to say we have collected so and so medicinal plants, because that is the center of the research project. But we are also involved in other uh, plants as well. And we, to the end, we'll be able to compare that uh, plants of this nature, they are more or less feminine or masculine or, or what. Maybe I didn't understand your question properly. No, I think that answered it perfectly. Thank you. Um, then I'll go on to the questions that I have in the chat module. So I'm going to start with Richard. Um, he says, thanks, Amani, for this presentation. Um, he, I'll, I'll start with this question number one. Uh, it has been reported too that the names of fruits and the trees that they come from can include the same nominal roots but with different gender marking. Did you encounter anything like that in your data collection? Uh, no, we have not gone into that. At this moment, I'm sorry that I cannot provide a, a proper answer for that. But I'm, I'm grateful for, for his question because now it, gives us the way we should be looking at the data we keep on obtaining every day in the, when we go into the field. So I cannot uh, make a firm statement that so-and-so nouns have so-and-so uh, come from so-and-so roots and they had been modified or mm, uh, accommodated this way and mm, anything of the morphological nature for the nouns particularly with gender and the number marking. Okay, uh, I'll go straight on to his second question, which is also, did you see any variation in the gender of a certain plant from one region to another? That also, is, uh, I cannot confirm as well. Uh, so Richard now has, uh, will have trouble with me. Because now we have not compared the morphological variations because we want to obtain, we went for the second, first round, so we want to go again and uh, pull up more, more uh, crops, oh, sorry, more plant names. And we are targeting a hand, maybe a hundred from each, from, from which now we'll be able to um, separate nouns across uh, 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 settlements, uh, had the settlements before had the settlements, and it will also be able to determine how the morphologies differ from one had the settlement to the other, and uh, if there are variations, are, a, are they a result of imposition from the neighboring communities or not? So that is a task that we have not yet uh, done. Um, okay, great. I think that answers Richard's question here. So I'm going to move on to a comment from Bonnie Sands, who says, thank you for this talk. Uh, she says the photographs are very nice, um, but she says that she would caution against using Marlowe for citing words as he's not a linguist and spells things incorrectly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll take that. 
and, and of course I was worried uh, with, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was worried, yes, yeah. Uh, because now we say with the Congo lobby, yeah. At least I would, I would accept if he had uh, two uh, vowels there, Congo lobby, I would accept that. But now I know that's Congo lobby, eh. yeah, yeah, with that, even me, yeah. My sound is not good, but with that, my it's not good even with me. But this one is, yeah, yeah. I take her position with a lot of respect, Bonnie Sands. Thank you. Uh, I will follow up by a question, which is also from Bonnie Sands. He asks, uh, what do you think about the role of style to explain some of the borrowings? People may want to show that they are multilingual through their lexical choices. Loan words are not only caused by need or the introduction of a new thing to be named, but sometimes a new connotation comes with the loan word. Ooh. I may make an observation from Dunduhina, because I spent some more time, and to me, Kisukuma becomes more easier than Datoga or Iraq in the eastern uh, uh, Hadza, the settlements of the eastern Hadza. Mm, I think in the, mm, in the Dunduhina, in the western parts of the settlements of the Hadza, the impact of Skuma cannot be ignored. They are highly impressed with Kisukuma to the extent that mm, they, um, Matingolism in Kisukuma and in Hadza appear to have come to a point that they are, I would say they are, they are becoming more like Sukuma people rather than maintaining their traditional uh, Hadza language. And I would say in some of the uh, uh, statements I wanted to make is that in the, in the Sungu village, Sukuma is the lingua franca. So when I sit with the Hadza and I'll ask them to continue speaking in the Hadza, maybe in a way at a point also I'll hear when they mention the trees or uh, plants or crops in their speech, they will always switch to Kisukuma. And they, of course they are aware that I do not speak Sukuma, but uh, when they switch to Kisukuma, I could feel it. So, I don't think it will be a style. I think it will be, if I were to argue in the line of um, materialism, I would say it's not, they don't code um, switch or switch because of fun, but, but because the Sukuma have uh, taken much of their uh, linguistic uh, 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 knowledge. And uh, just to mention, even children who come from Hadza, Hadza parents um, who are lower than, say, 18, uh, years old or 15 law, they command Kisukuma and they do not command uh, Hadza. So in, in Dunduhina, more of Kisukuma rather than uh, of being more of mm -mm, Hadza. And if I have not answered this question properly, please we can continue talking through emails or uh, another question can, can come, please. All right, thank you. Um, so then I'll move on to a question from Alice Mitchell, who says, Asanta Sana, for this interesting and entertaining talk. Do you know much about the cultural ideas motivating the existence of the multiple names for animals in Hadza? Is the ordinary name taboo in context of hunting? Also, perhaps plants are thought about differently to animals, so wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't expect plants to have multiple names. Oh. But I will assume some plants will also have taboos. Yeah, I, I just assume. I understand that in the literature that there are uh, some names are taboos, yes. For animals, the, yeah, that is okay. But I assume maybe with the size of the plant, some name plants will be taboos. Uh, uh, the other assumption is that in a place where they go and con conduct a payment kind of uh, sacrifice, there are might be trees which are sacred, sacred or sacred. And if they are sacred trees, uh, they might not be mentioned. 
So if, if these trees are not mentioned, then they should have another name, which is a taboo. And is it possible for that name to be borrowed from, say, the Sukuma or the Datoga or Iraq? Uh, that is a subject matter which we have not obtained an, uh, an answer yet. And um, there are also some trees which we assume might be associated with being a home of uh, spiritual matters, say, is a home of devils. In, your, in some other communities in Africa, graveyards are planted with some trees. And such trees, the names of those trees are known, but communities will opt for another name. And uh, are these names being taken from another um, community or not? But um, uh, I only obtained one name for, you know, in Dunduhina, I obtained one name for a small plant, um, a, um, a herb, which is used to, to spray it, uh, because it has some odor or some smell, some odor smell, that's used to smell on dead persons. And I assumed that such a plant will have um, some, it will be a taboo for the community and it will have a, a name. And is that name borrowed from Mesora, that is, we have not yet uh, um, established the, uh, uh, the reality for that. So um, with, with animals, yes, there are taboos. And um, the, that the hearts are tend to shy away from such uh, taboo words. I assume it's the same for plants, because there are some plants might be taboos as well. Thank I'm you. Yeah, sure. I think Alice uh, agrees with that as well, because I see she commented down below, yes, maybe that's true. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, then I want to move on to a question from Martin Maus. He says, Santa Sana, very rich presentation. Yeah, so um, he asks about innovations for names of plants which are not as commonly used. So maybe plant names that you won't see as often. Um, and they might come from a, another lexical domain. So you might have uh, a plant which is referred to as the toothbrush of the jackal because that's what it resembles. So you have an entire class. So do you see any plant names like that? So classes or phrases? No, I cannot uh, confirm that. So I'll take it as a a subject matter of further research for us when we go to the field for the next round. Uh, uh, but if it will be innovations, innovations will always be names from other, with this small data we have, names will be innovations from, uh, uh, names from uh, uh, foreign languages, names from neighboring communities. But I, I cannot confirm that. We'll need to sit down and see the reality for that. Thank you. I just see that Bonnie Sands responded to that, and I think it was to this question. And she says that she did not notice such phrase names for Hatsa plants either. So that might confirm mm -hmm. that you don't find these. OK. Um, OK, I'll go back up. And I'm sorry, I'm moving on to a question from Stanislav, which I saw here. He, saw, uh, he says, thank you for the presentation. Uh, is there any difference in marking useful and useless plants? Ooh, another idea which we didn't come into contact. But yeah, but now when I went to Yaedachini, plants were being selected. Mm. My uh, um, minimum uh, would select that, that this is a plant, this is its name. But I will say in the same vicinity, there is another plant, either small or uh, so, uh, the other time said, ah, that is moya, moya, which means those are just flowers. So mm, mm, the fact is that some plants are more useful. And the usefulness is in, uh, embedded in two grounds. One, they are a source of food. Two, they are medicinal. And uh, these are the two uh, 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 issues which come into play. Maybe also the, my methodology was not good uh, because 
I introduced myself and introduced the purpose of our research. And the main phrase will be learning about plants as they are used by the Hadza. And of course, mentioning about food, you cannot ignore that. Mentioning about medicine, you cannot ignore that. So maybe our informants would select plants which are useful for food and, uh, and medicine. But with Moya, uh, that is how uh, those is like, it's not necessary for me as a researcher to take a photo of a, a, a grass which is useless. So usefulness is, uh, okay, good. In Dundohina, since I told them I want to collect, for the first round, I wanted to collect 50 nouns so that I can sit down and lend them. And my two informants had been selecting trees for me. And they will select trees which are useful. And at, at a point or so, I photographed a tree. Uh, of course, I, call, I recall even the name, Kasengese in Ikizukuma. Kasengese in Ikizukuma, and it is Sengese in, 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 that, uh, in Hadza. And Kasengese is in typical Ikizukuma. And uh, Sengeseko is a, a borrowed uh, noun. And they could not recall the typical name in Hadza for this plant. So the usefulness and the less usefulness and the uselessness of the plant is indeed uh, available. But um, um, using the morphologies of the nouns to indicate that this is useful, whether it becomes masculine or feminine, or this is um, less useless, whether it becomes masculine or feminine, or this one, we cannot mark gender on, on, that gr on the ground that is, uh, it's a moya or it's kasengese, or uh, that one we have not yet gone into such far. But I'm grateful for the comment and we'll look into that. Thank you. Uh, I see Bonnie Sands respond, uh, responded to that as well. And she says that she was told that they don't bother naming plants that they don't use. Um, they were sometimes very striking flowers. They were just not bothered uh, with, with naming them. Uh, and she also says that she tried really hard to get names for even the useless plants. So that's my tie in there. <laughs> Maybe we'll have the same trouble. Um, thank you, so thank you. Yeah. I will move on to uh, a comment or question from Crispina Alphonse, who says, uh, Iraqo has a, a mangure for millet. Uh, I wish you would just look whether Hatsa obtains a word from Iraqo or the toga. Yeah, they have many of them. And of course, Kuria, Kuria Mdoe was dealing with uh, Datoga, was eager to pinpoint to me, like uh, Tumbate, Tumbate, which is tobacco. And of course, he mentioned Dimbetina, uh, Dimbe, Dimbetida for tobacco, which is um, more or less similar. And of course, I know Molongoda is uh, Datoga, Sonogoda is Datoga, because I'm involved with Datoga. And um, I think there have to be names from Iraq as well. And technically, such names will be coming from Mangola and Yedachini, where the Iraq-speaking communities and the Datoga-speaking communities have settled in the neighborhood or in the just adjacent of the uh, of the Hadza. And if we obtain, say, a hundred names of plants from each community, even the useless plants, we might reach a point to establish when, uh, which nouns now come from, from uh, uh, Iraq. And uh, I know Hagu. Haguko, that is Iraq, for maize. Do I get me? Yeah, okay. Oh, if I didn't have maize here, ah, yes. Maize is Haguko, which uh, in Iraq is Hagu. So the Hadza have uh, uh, assigned the feminine gender, the Makako, to Hagu, which is Iraq. Mm. 
Crispin, I'm sorry, that is the only one I can get for now from these slides. All right, thank you. I think then with that, we're going to be moving on. Um, so uh, I'll first come to a comment from Maerte Maus. Um, he says a comment about Bahi, a term for Western Hadza. Uh, this is the Bantu word uh, Wa'asi, meaning original or former inhabitant. Uh, as we see in Wahi Nyaturu or Wasi of Kolo, um, Athi in Kenya, etc. Oh, okay, thank you. Bahi. Um, oh. With that, I'm moving on to um, a comment from Molimo Pitra. Thank you for your nice presentation. I would like to ask how did you reach the conclusion uh, that Bantu languages, Sukuma in particular, is a donor language to Hatsabe? Uh, and not the opposites. Uh, I think it would be better if you displayed a morphological pattern of the lexicon. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Uh, with the gender marking uh, elements, the ko, pe'e, or be'e, uh, that is a first uh, uh, morphological sign to indicate that they borrowed the term. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so we have candoliaco for for potatoes, sweet potatoes, candoliaco. Uh, uh, other speakers would say candolo. Mm. And I assume uh, ndolo is. I am aware that ndolo is originally Bantu. Right. But now, since they assigned the uh, um, gender marker, the feminine gender marker. Which is not available in the Bantu, then the Hadza might have borrowed that. And Matanga, they also assigned the gender marker for Matanga, Matanga, which is a, a, a name for pumpkins, and even Ndula or Ndulele. And Mm. It appears to have been assigned a, a, a suffix for gender. So I will agree with you. Mm -mm. The borrowing, the loan words will always involve suffixes, and these suffixes are uh, hadza, and they help to indicate mm -mm, gender. And when you have two names, as in this slide, which I'm displaying. When you have two names, Muduguyuwa and Hogoko, it's, with me, Hogoko would typically look native Hadza, and Muduguyuwa is, is foreign, or Moboko, as opposed to Hak. And mm, mm, I should also confess, mm, with some names with clicks, and as we assume that clicks, uh, as we know that clicks are typically Hadza, uh, uh, names with clicks will always be indigenous in Hadza, but that does not rule out that foreign words are not assigned with uh, clicks. Mm, maybe Bon Sans will help me with that, but I assume mm, mm, at this point that now all nouns which have clicks or any sounds which are non Ibantu, but there are sounds which are typically Hadza in the consonant system of the Hadza, such nouns would be, uh, would be origin in Hadza. Thank All you. All right, thank you. Uh, I have another, um, Marta says, look also at the lexical innovation different from borrowing from the, uh, for the newer crops. So for mm -hmm. example, Iraku has a word for maize, which is derived from an original Iraku word for flower. Oh, okay. With that, I'm also going to read out two comments from Andrew Harfu, as, uh, Harvey, as they seem to go together. Um, first of all, he says, Mais, the word uh, in Ihanzu is uh, Akimpukile, uh, and potato in Uhanzu is Akondolo. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, Akondolo is typically, uh, uh, yeah. It's Bantu. Maybe, yeah, it's Bantu. So, because now the Hadza, they assigned the suffix ko. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, which is a gender marker for feminine singular. So yeah, thank you. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna move on to, I think what's gonna be the last comment, which is from Bonnie Sands. Um, she says, I was told that there were no people who were plant specialists. Uh, it is possible that during the population bottleneck from around 1890, due to Maasai troubles, that the Hatsabe may have lost elders which had uh, special medicinal knowledge. It's possible that this provided the reason for them to need to borrow terms from other languages. Uh, okay. Thank you for the observation. Mm, yeah. All right, and I think with that, we can finish the question and answer section for today, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd like to say thank you again, especially everyone who offered questions and comments today. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. Looking ahead, the next presentation in the webinar series will be given on Wednesday, May 6th by Andrew Harvey, and it's titled uh, Verbal Paradigms in Gorba, Phonological Analysis and Surface of a Unified Account. Um, with that, it just trust me to thank Amani again for his really interesting presentation, and of course everyone else for participating today. And I hope to see you again at our next webinar.